Right, well, this week seems a particularly good time to deal with government policies and the inadvertent consequences that some of them have, even with the best of intentions. I mean, we've had this issue of the visa regulations with Derek Hanakom, the tourism minister, admitting that the new regulations have created a rather disastrous situation for tourism. But I want to go back about 20 years to the deregulation and liberalization of trade. I don't know if you recall that. At the time, the whole labor movement warned that this was going to be disastrous, that we would end up having massive job losses, that we could well have a reduction, a massive reduction in um, the capability to produce. And that union warning was borne out, particularly in the textile and garment sector, if you think about it. We have lost tens of thousands of jobs. But it also had an impact on the agricultural sector, and an impact, I must admit, that most of us, and myself included, missed. We did not look at the detail. And in fact, what happened was we ended up with a polarized situation where what was happening in the agricultural sector was presented as farmers versus farm workers, rather than understanding that their futures within this system are interrelated. And at a time when there were a lot of evictions, and one has to look here at the uh, Security of Tenure Acts that came in, how, what impact did that have on top of this liberalization? And there were more evictions, and in 2012, Stone Cesani, who was then the chair of the uh, Rural the Land Reform Portfolio Committee, called for a study to be done to find out what was exactly happening. This was before the Dadoan strikes, etc. And the ILO, the International Labour Organization, stepped into the breach and agreed to sponsor it. Now that study has, was completed in February and was released last week. It was done the authors are Margaret Fisser of the University of Cape Town and Stuart Ferrer of the University of KZN. And what this report does, 273 pages of it, it actually, I think, demolishes many of the myths and stereotypes that emerged around the whole farming era. They refer to the stalemate that now exists, where they say farm workers really require more than 150 rand a day, they now get 120 from this year, in order to have an adequate living wage. At the same time, farmers, because of the pressures they've been put under, cannot afford this, and this is the stalemate. But they also come up with a number of recommendations and remedies. And Vic van Fieren, the ILO man in Pretoria, has said that they want to keep this debate going. I hope they do, and I hope the government listens, especially now when we have a local government election scheduled next year, and a government in power that is rather worried about its waning support. And there's always a tendency among politicians to play for electoral expediency. Perhaps they should learn the lesson from the late president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, who spent billions of oil revenues on importing cheap food and damaged severely the entire farming sector of that country. Well, anyway, that's what I'll concentrate on in my Inside Labor column, which you can read on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow and in the City Press business section on Sunday. In the meantime, it's over to you to comment, over to you to give your points of view and anything you may see about government policy and inadvertent consequences, problems, etc. The comment column is below, and of course you can always write to editor at fin24.com. That's editor at fin24.com. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.